In this video, we are overclocking the Intel Core i9-13900K P cores all the way up to 6.5 gigahertz in five minutes or less using the Maximus Z790 Apex motherboard and the EK Quantum Delta 2 Tech water cooler. I'll speed run you through the BIOS settings and provide some notes and tips along the way. More than usual, I want to stress that this is for entertainment purposes only and not the whole picture on how to overclock your system. Please don't even attempt to test these settings unless you have this specific CPU, motherboard and cooling solution. If you want to learn how to overclock this kind of a system, please have a look at the longer Scatterbencher video that's already up on this channel. All right, let's do this. When you've entered the BIOS, Go to the Advanced menu. Enter the CPU Configuration submenu. Since, for this video, we are exclusively focusing on P-Core overclocking, we will disable the E-Cores. Set Active Efficiency Cores to 0. Go to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP2. This enables the use of the Intel Extreme Memory Profile 3.0 technology and will make the DDR5 memory run at its rated speed of DDR5-7200. Selecting XMP2 means the motherboard will load the complete XMP profile. Set BCLK frequency to 100.15. That is a simple workaround in case the VF points, which we'll configure later, don't work correctly in combination with 100 MHz BCLK. Set ASUS Multicore Enhancement to enable to remove all limits. This will unleash the Turbo Boost 2.0 power limits and lets the CPU run at unlimited power indefinitely. Set DRAM frequency to DDR5-7615 MHz. This effectively overclocks the memory to DDR5-7600. Note that we retain the memory XMP timings because we selected XMP2 earlier. Set Performance Core Ratio to by core Usage. This enables us to configure a dynamic P-Core overclock as we can configure the maximum allowed P-Core ratio for a given number of active P-Cores. Set one core and two core ratio limit to 65. Set three core and four core ratio limit to 64. Set five core to eight core ratio limit to 62. Enter the specific performance core submenu. Here we can limit the maximum ratio for each P-Core individually regardless of the bi-core usage configuration. We can also define the specific per P-Core adaptive voltage for the specific P-Core ratio limit. Set performance core 0, core 1, core 3, core 4, core 5 and core 7 specific ratio limit to 65. Set performance core 2 and core 6 specific ratio limit to 64. Set performance core 2 and core 6 specific voltage to adaptive mode. Set offset mode sign to plus. Set additional turbo mode CPU core 2 and core 6 voltage to 1.5. Leave the specific performance core submenu. Enter the AVX related controls submenu. Now we can adjust the AVX negative ratio offset, which lowers the P core ratio when using AVX instructions. The offset is referenced against the per P core ratio limit, which we just configured. Set AVX2 ratio offsets to per core ratio limit to user specify. Set AVX2 ratio offset to 6. Leave the AVX related controls submenu. Enter the Digi Plus VRM submenu. Here we can make changes to the voltage regulator configuration. We adjust the VRM load line to minimize the V droop, which is the voltage drop when the CPU goes from idle to full load. We choose the VRM load line with the smallest V droop so the effective voltage deviates the least from our manually configured CPU voltage frequency curve. Set CPU load line calibration to level 8. Leave the DigiPlus VRM submenu. Enter the internal CPU power management submenu. Set regulate frequency by above threshold to disabled. This prevents the CPU from reaching a maximum of 90 degrees Celsius and instead allows it to go to the Intel specified TJ Max of 100 degrees Celsius. Set IAAC load line to 0.01. This ensures the voltage requested by the CPU to the VRM controller does not differ from the configured voltage frequency curve. Leave the internal CPU power management submenu. Enter the thermal velocity boost submenu. Set cache dynamic OC switcher to enabled. 
This feature allows us to switch between low and high gear depending on the CPU current. We use it to limit the ring frequency in all core workloads to provide voltage headroom for the P-cores to boost to a higher frequency. Set current threshold to switch to low cache gear to 160. Set threads to sleep for high cache gear to 0. Set high cache ratio to 50. Set a low cache ratio to 44. Set TVB voltage optimizations to disabled. This prevents the CPU from automatically reducing the voltage based on its current temperature, as this may induce instability when manually tuning the voltage frequency curve. Set overclocking TVB to enabled. OCTVB allows us to limit the P core frequency based on the CPU operating temperature. It is based on the turbo ratio configuration. For each number of active cores, we define two temperature points, each with a unique number of down bins. Set one core to six core active to enabled. For one core and two core active, set temperature A to 35. For three core to eight core active, set temperature A to 65. For each core active, set negative ratio offset A to user specify. For 1 core, 2 core, 7 core and 8 core active, set a ratio offset A to 2. For 3 core to 6 core active, set ratio offset A to 1. For 1 core to 4 core active, set temperature B to 80. For 5 core and 6 core active, set temperature B to 85. For 7 core and 8 core active, set temperature B to 90. For the other core active, set temperature B to 90. For each core active, set negative ratio offset B to user specify. For each core active, set a ratio offset B to 1. Leave the thermal velocity boost submenu. Enter the VF point offset submenu. That gives us access to Intel's advanced voltage offset feature, more commonly known as the VF points. This feature extends the adaptive voltage mode by allowing end users to undervolt or overvolt specific points of the CPU's factory fused voltage frequency curve. Set offset mode sign 6 to 10 to minus. Set VF point 6 to 100 millivolt. Set VF point 7 to 125 millivolt. Set VF point 8 to 135 millivolt. Set VF point 9 and 10 to 150 millivolt. Leave the VF point offset submenu. Set global core SVID voltage to adaptive mode. This allows us to control the voltage associated with the highest point of the voltage frequency curve. The adaptive voltage set in the BIOS maps to what's called the OC ratio. The OC ratio is equal to the highest configured CPU ratio. In our case, that's 65X. The voltage between 65X and the next VF point 58x is interpolated by the CPU. Set offset mode sign to plus. Set additional turbo mode CPU core voltage to 1.5. Set high DRAM voltage mode to enabled. This enables memory voltage higher than 1.4 volt, which is what we need for our memory overclock. Set DRAM VDD voltage to 1.45. Set DRAM VDDQ voltage to 1.45. Then save and exit the BIOS. Ensure the cryocooling mode is set to unregulated in the operating system. To ensure everything is working as intended, we rerun some benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to the default settings. We see a maximum performance increase of plus 20% in Cinebench R23. The highest core clock reported in the operating system is 6500 MHz for all P cores except P core 2 and P core 6. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX disabled, the average CPU P core clock is 5693 MHz with 1.2 volts. The average CPU temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. The water temperature is 32.9 degrees Celsius and the average CPU package power is 224.3 watts. And that's it. I thank you for watching and my patrons for the support and see you next time.